My name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a cardiologist, and today's video is on the subject of anticoagulation in atrial fibrillation. This video is entitled Pill in the Pocket Anticoagulation, a new future for atrial fibrillation, perhaps. So for those who don't know what a atrial fibrillation is, please have a look at some of my other videos. And I've talked lots about AFib. But one of the hardest decisions in AFib management is this. Should a patient take blood thinners long term? On the one hand, AF can cause strokes and AF related strokes are often more severe, more disabling and more fatal than other types. On the other hand, blood thinners come with their own problems. They can cause bleeding, they can affect quality of life, they may cause side effects, they cost money, and many patients may struggle to stay on them for life. For decades now, the answer has been simple. Once you are at risk, you stay on anticoagulants indefinitely. But perhaps it is now time to rethink the one-size-fits-all approach. So the current challenge is this, that guidelines recommend lifelong anticoagulation for patients with risk factors, regardless of how often they actually have AF. So if you don't have risk factors with AF, then you don't really need anticoagulants. So if you're young, if you are not diabetic and don't have hypertension and have never had a stroke or previous heart failure, then you don't need anticoagulants. But if you have those risk factors, then even if you have a small episode of AF once every year, it is recommended that you take anticoagulants lifelong. So regardless of how often the patient actually has AF, they still are recommended to take the anticoagulant. Even if the AF stops spontaneously, or if the patient has a successful ablation, the anticoagulant should continue. That's what the guidelines say. And this blanket strategy was born from caution because we know that rhythm control isn't always permanent. You know, you can have an ablation and the AF can still come back. Similarly, when the AF comes back, it can be silent, so the patient may not even know it's come back. And therefore, the stroke risk may persist even when the AF has seemingly gone away because the AF could come back and be silent. So the problem is this does mean that millions of people have to take anticoagulants every day and perhaps unnecessarily. So this is where there's been this new idea, the idea of pill in the pocket anticoagulation. So recent insights challenge the old thinking. First, we have learned that stroke risk in AF is related to burden, the amount of AF matters. So Studies that have been done in people who have pacemakers and defibrillators, because pacemakers and defibrillators can look for AF, they're very good monitors. Um, in these studies, it has been shown that you usually need hours of AF to raise the stroke risk. And the danger will wax and wane after each episode. Secondly, technology now lets us monitor the heart continuously, not just with pacemakers, but also perhaps with smartwatches, and consumer devices. And thirdly, we know that modern oral anticoagulants can work within hours. So if you put those together, you have the, a new possibility, the possibility of pill-in-pocket anticoagulation, meaning instead of having to take the blood thinner every day, perhaps patients could one day take them for a short course only when a significant episode of AF is detected covering the high-risk period and then stopping again. There are no large-scale studies to tell us that this is a viable option, but there have been some pilot studies. Uh, two studies I can mention are react.com and tacticaf. So if you look those online, react.com or tacticaf. And these have tested this with patients who have implanted monitors, so people who have pacemakers and defibrillators because they're very good monitors. And what they've tested this hypothesis and they've shown that actually, if you identify 
episodes of AF which are lasting a prolonged period of time and then give the patient the anticoagulant, uh, then overall there's a dramatic reduction in overall anticoagulant use. So 75 to 94 percent less time on blood thinners without a single stroke during follow-up. So it's encouraging data but this is from early small-scale trials but it does suggest that the idea may be feasible. The problem is, you know, implantable monitors are expensive and we can't just, we can't give them to everyone because they're invasive, they're expensive, etc. So what has been found in these two studies can't automatically just be translated to the normal population because that would require implantable monitors. But we do now have smartwatches which are capable of detecting AF with over 95% accuracy and even recording an ECG. And therefore, it is possible that if everyone's got a smartwatch which can pick up AF, even silent AF, then this approach could be tested in the wider population without the need for invasive loop monitors. Of course, this, is, this idea isn't without debate. Does every stroke in AF really follow an episode? And there have been studies that have shown that there's poor temporal relationship between the episode of AF and the stroke. Can strokes occur independently? Because perhaps it's not about the AF, but about a weak atria. So you may have a weak atria, which can allow blood clot to form. And that weak atria can release the clot whenever it likes, and that can cause the stroke. But the weak atria doesn't necessarily have to be fibrillating. And so there have been studies which have shown that actually, you know, there are the temporal relationship between when you have your AF and when, when you have your stroke is poor. And that's why we still don't know if this strategy of pill in the pocket anticoagulation is safe. But what we do know is this, that patients often refuse or stop anticoagulants because they don't want to take them lifelong. And ignoring new evidence and clinging to that one size fits all concept may be just as foolish as rushing into change too soon. So is pill in the pocket anticoagulation fact or fiction? Well, right now it's a fascinating concept backed by small studies and made possible by new technology. But before it can change practice, we need large trials to prove it's both safe and effective. What is clear is that the age of personalized medicine is here. And if we can tailor anticoagulation to rhythm burden, protect against stroke and reduce bleeding, it could be a game changer in AF care. Perhaps in the future, the words take it only when you need it might apply not just to painkillers, but also to anticoagulants in AF. Please don't change your treatment based on this video. You must go and talk to your doctor. And as I say, this is just a concept and we need to watch this space. But at this point in time, it's important to continue taking your anticoagulant indefinitely if you've got the risk factors. But there is some hope in the future. Once again, thank you so much for listening. I wish you all the best.